I'll give you an example in UK what happened. I don't know if you guys were aware. Did anyone aware of the Trojan horse plot? Did that ring a bell? The Trojan horse. Okay, if it doesn't, don't worry. But it, I'll tell you what happened was, there was this scandal that there was apparently, it's, it's all, it was all nonsense, that there was a Muslim takeover in a school. school. Hardliners, fanatics, that they're trying to take over the, 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 the governance of the school and so on. It turned out it was a big hoax. It was a big hoax. But what happened was, based on a letter that got sent by who, by who, we don't know anything much more than that. It created this hysteria. Everyone started freaking out. Okay, Muslims are planning a takeover of the school. So what happened was Ofsted and all these things, agencies started getting involved. It created a massive panic. Every newspaper was running with, with Trojan horse, Trojan horse, Trojan horse, Trojan horse. Muslims were under scrutiny to think this is what these people are doing. You come in this country and then you want to take over. That was the news that was kind of getting pushed out by the far right. After what happened was, oh, I'm sorry, we made a mistake. It was a hoax. Oh, lucky bundle. The hysteria and the panic you created, people are freaking out, saying Muslim this, they're trying to take over this. You've created this mass, this pandemonium everywhere, and people are now freaking out to just say, I'm sorry, it was a mistake. So in Islam, this is why responsible coverage of media is also one of the things of Islam. We responsibly, don't just send afwa. I think this, I think this, based on the suspicion, we don't know for sure. Innocent until proven guilty is a concept within Islam as well. And even when you do send it to others, there should be a reason for Islam to help people. So for example, if I know that, I, I, I know that this, this person's shar cannot affect these people, I don't need to disclose to them what this person does. But for example, if somebody I know is a complete fraudster and he's saying to these people, look brother, let's do some business, yeah? We do some business and I'm saying, brother, look, just a word of caution, a word of caution. You've asked me about this brother, so my haq is to tell you the truth that there's been an incident with this person in the past. Khalas. I don't need to say he did a, a, a business with Flana Mia and he jacked him of 20 grand, he closed one of his curry shops down and then he moved up to somebody else, and then he went to East London and did another one there, then went some... Right, we don't need to say all that. All I need to say, you came to me, I have a hug to tell you the truth. But again, what a person should always think is that we should always give people the benefit of the doubt. Always. Understand that there's a possibility, but always give people the benefit of the doubt. Dhan, when it becomes haram, is when a person makes yaqeen. When you hear something and you make yaqeen that that's exactly what they are like. That's exactly what he or she is like. Same what happened with this Trojan horse thing. It got out, taken out of context. People started thinking Muslims are taking over. And then they did retract. They didn't send an apology, but you know where it was? Later pages. Third, fourth page, somewhere a little comma, oh, I'm sorry, we made a mistake. Bruv, the, the panic you created, the people aren't going to forget the panic. Because it was going one runtime, one time, LBC, all news. Yard, where is the responsibility of sending proper information out? And then people want to say Muslims are quite uptight when it comes to the media. Because it is shown that it can't be trusted all the time. So naturally we're going to be skeptical at certain times.